Mike here. Doug, thank you very much for inviting me to the panel. Daniela, for all the work that you do in really bringing the, this issue to the front of, of, of all of our awareness. It's very, very important. So I'm going to talk a little bit from the entrepreneurial opportunity in the front end of what I think is a very, very exciting way to think about material and how do we get the most out of it, just from a common sense perspective. So Replenish, um, I am the founder and chief reuser um, in really trying to think about packaging and look at it in a whole different way. I think it's quite exciting from business models, from fulfilling a lot of the economic pressures that businesses are under, and think about it in a new, new way. But first, it's great to always frame how did we end up here. This is one of the fir very first bottles of Windex. So this is before plastic was ever even on the scene. This is from the late 30s. This is actually a metal spray top right here. You would actually reuse this top. It was very expensive to make. This is all glass, blow molded, just as we originally started making glass and little hollow tubes and the Egyptians. That's how we ended up with blow molding, right? All came from this. And then a man came along, and um, his name was Roger Dragett, one of the early founders of Windex. And he actually uh, was the first one to really in, uh, innovate around this new material called plastic. He actually licensed intellectual property from Henry Ford to turn soybeans into plastics. And this is a bottle of Windex from 1943. This is the first time that plastic showed up onto the modern consumer landscape. So he was able to take this piece of metal and turn it into plastic. This is actually the rest of his metal here. It's a, it's a dip tube, but this was extremely valuable back in the early 40s, right? Imagine the manufacturing process to make this. But we knew what happened from here. In 50, 60 years, we started innovating the material, right, and falling in love with what we could do with plastic and saying, oh my gosh, instead of using this glass, we can just make the whole container out of plastic. And so we really stopped thinking about the design of the bottle itself, what this really did. Back in the 40s and everything before then, we always got the most out of everything that we had, right? That was the fundamental law of societies. You can't be wasteful. You didn't stick on the scene for very long if you did. But this plastic and all the great attributes that it had kind of became its downfall a little bit because we took it for granted. We started putting it into everything. But we stopped thinking about the fundamental design. So this is where we are in this modern world right now because we're kind of stuck in this idea of disposability. And we all love convenience, right? So we think convenience equals disposability. How can we separate it? Well, it's really all a matter of design. And that's where I think there's a great opportunity to move from this kind of story and start talking about innovation. And uh, let me play you a little video that can kind of show that and where the future can go. So that bottle becomes a tool. Thank you. But it's, it's not just about spray bottles. It, it's about transforming all of the products that we use in our home. Because what you find is they're all water. So that's a lot of bulk and weight. So you think about sports and beverages, mouthwash, oral care. A lot of these are bottles that we use once and throw away. And there's no reason why they have to be designed that way. We can build more intelligence into them. So it's about floor care. It's even about baby formula, correct? This is all things that we actually mix in powder today. But if we design things the right way, we can start taking billions out of these streams that we're talking about. 
And we think that's the way that you can think about innovation. So what we argue for is that a bottle really should have two holes in it, right? And if you do that, you fundamentally create all of these new benefits that weren't there before. This little pod right here is three bottles of this. But you take 15 tractor trailers before of 32 ounce bottles and take them down to one. You start transforming the supply chain. So the retailers start liking that. Oh, sorry. Uh, the retailers start liking that. And consumers start getting better solutions. They start saving money. So that's how you can start thinking about these issues and get away from just trying to focus on the back end and get to the front end of the problem. And that's when you can really unlock a lot of value. So.